Hey everyone, it's Charlie again. It's been a while. I'm in a uh, my studio in the drum room, but I have a cool update. We're gonna replace the studio monitors. So basically what we're gonna do is replace the Dynaudio uh, LYD48s with a uh, set of um, Atom Audio A77H, that's the horizontal, and their 12 inch sub. And this is probably all you'll see of me because I hate making videos. But for anyone out there that may be considering a uh, home studio change in speakers, this might help you. Okay, so here's the studio and these are the darn audios. And it took me uh, maybe a year, I feel like, to uh, to really get to where I understood these speakers and what they um, what they sounded like. But I also have a set of um, I also have a set of Dyne or Audis headphones that I do a final mix with, and they're pretty cool. I really enjoy them. But uh, I'm trying to close the gap between mixing with my headphones, which I keep in a little case down there and what I hear when I'm building a mix. Um, so that's the process. The whole purpose of this replacement is because my KRK 10 sub just died. And so a buddy of mine at an old church that I worked at found this waterlogged one, which was the same brand and model. The screws, you could see the screws were all rusted. I was kind of afraid to plug it in, but it worked, but it is clear the two subs are not even close to the same. And so instead of having to relearn this sub and then come back and relearn that sub after a repair, I decided to just go ahead and do the upgrade. And uh, then I'll send that one back to KRK and get it fixed and put that up for sale as well. But um, so that's this is the point of the replacement and we'll go from there. So here are the boxes for the A77Hs. There's the, the sub that needs repaired and then the waterlogged one that still worked, go figure. And then you can see over here, that's the size of the, um, the other, the, the Dyn Audios. But they're in main condition. So we'll see how the unpacking goes. They're in place, the sub is in place. Um, the caps are off the ISO acoustic, so it's just the poles between the two, uh, between the bottom of the speaker and the top of the stand. And now we're just, uh, it, it looks great. It's very dark. It's amazing what happens when you take something that reflects light out of your studio. So, so that's it so far. And now we're going to wire it up and see what happens. Okay, I'm done with my setup and... Um, I'll just give you a first five second. Uh, I put in a song that I'm very familiar with, and then I played a mix that I just finished on my Dyn Audios. And the first thing I noticed was it was just pleasing to the ears. I dropped on the back of the uh, A77s. You can um, you can just kind of change the band. And so I just dropped the low mids a little bit because it felt a little muddy, but that's most likely my room. But right out of the box, they sound great. But the first thing I noticed is that I wasn't fatigued trying to strain to hear the mid-range. Um, it just popped right out and so did all of the high end. Little sparkles of guitar strums, little ear candy that was in the mix. So that just made it super easy. And like I said, the goal of this studio monitor upgrade was to close the gap between uh, my Dyn Audio speakers and my Audi's headphones, which is what I usually use for the final mix. So um, the sub is nice and warm. The speakers are nice and warm, which really surprised me. Um, well, all the stuff that I read said, you know, uh, Adam it has really crystal clear high end no distortion. So I almost expected it to be brittle and it was just so warm and so pleasing, easy to listen to. So I'm really pleased. And like I said, it's going to be weeks, months before these things burn in correctly. But uh, I'll run some noise through them and we'll see what happens. And uh, I don't know if I'll have a follow-up video or not. 
I just want to share this process with you in case, uh, in case you were thinking about upgrading your studio monitors and, uh, have a great night.